here this evening with some of the neatest, finest scientists in San Angelo ISD. These are middle school students who have been our state winners at the state science fair competition. But you not only, to, to win at state, you won here at Angelo State, then you won at another competition, which was where? At our schools. At your school, right, let's go back. You won at your school, at your local, the regional was at Angelo State, and then you went to San Antonio to the state competition, didn't you? And won. My stars. Okay, I want to introduce you to our audience. I'm going to start here with Chase Lamaster. You are a student at Glenn. And what grade? I'm in seventh grade. Seventh grade. And your project, Chase? Well, I compared the difference between a robot with three wheels and a robot with four wheels and how they ran and different things. And so what did you win at each level? Well, I won first at my school level, first at regionals, and then I had got an honorable mention, which is the equivalent of fifth place at state science fair. Joy, you are a student at Glenn, yes. also seventh grade. Yes. And tell us what you won at each stage of the game. At my school level at Glen, I won first place in my category. And then at regionals, I also won first. And in state, I won second place in my plant science division. And your project is what? My project is over plant sciences, about growing plants hydroponically or without soil. Yes. And that could be in rocks or anything without soil. My father did that and seeing if plants grown with salt water in hydroponics or soil, which one would survive longer. Okay, we have Donnie, and you are an eighth grader yes, at Glenn. Yes, ma'am. And tell us about your project, Donnie. My project was the effects of chlorine concentration on the germination of soybeans, big word. The effect of chlorine on soybean germination. Yes, ma'am. How did you choose that? because uh, I live kind of like on a small little ranch and the majority of the, the livestock that we have, their food, 98 or 97 percent of it is made with soybean. If you could just tell me the, the neatest thing about doing your project. Probably would be that um, supposedly like when I added chlorine, it was supposed to reduce the growth or the germination, like slow down the time of it. And there was just one percentage that I put of chlorine in the water that actually doubled the growth of the, or doubled the germination of the soybean compared to the control, which the control received just water. And you were surprised at that? Yes, ma'am. Did you like being surprised? It was, uh, yes, I did, because like, it was something different than what I was expecting, because I was expecting just for basically all the, the plants, the germination just to go decrease down. Like the time would be slower than, or take longer than the control, which just received water. Okay, Connie, you are representing Lincoln Middle School, yes, and you are in eighth grade, mm -hmm. and tell us a little bit about your project from your local competition through to state. What was it about, and how, what honors did you win? Well, uh, my project is a DNA extraction, and what I did is I actually extracted or drew out DNA from the onion, and um, whenever I was at the school competition, I got first place. At regionals, I received second, and at state, I received fifth place, honorable mention. Why did you choose an onion? <laughs> there was actually many things I could have choose from. I was actually going to do a banana and then a strawberry, but then I had two different types of onions. So I saw that many kids actually, you know, in the past have done bananas and strawberries, so I decided to do a vegetable. And there was several different onions I could have chose from, like the red onion and uh, the white onion. But I realized that, like, after performing the experiment on both, that the white onion was the results were more valid. So I decided to use a white onion. Way to go! <laughs> you didn't take the easy route. Angelica, you are at Glenn, yes. an eighth grader. Tell us about your projects. I tested electrolytes and coconut water and Gatorade to see which one had the highest uh, concentration of electrolytes. And I tested that with a circuit and a multimeter to, um, to get my current flow to the multimeter and get my measurement. What do you want to be when you grow up? 
Uh, I definitely want to be in the medical field, I know that. And my project was kind of on nutrition, mm -hmm. and that's basically why I chose it, because I like working with stuff like that. Did you have any surprises? Uh, actually, I did, because the coconut water had almost triple the times uh, as much of electrolytes than the Gatorade. Did that surprise you? Yes. Because we think of Gatorade be having the most uh, help to our energy. Mm -hmm. So we just need to drink coconut? Coconut water. Yes. Coconut water. I'm not sure I can, but I'll try. <laughs> we have one last young lady, Danielle. You are seventh grader at Glenn. Yes, ma'am. Tell us about your project. I tested three different blade designs on a wind turbine to see if different blade designs affected the performance of the wind turbine. What, what prompted you to choose that? Um, last year I did something similar but it was with um, wing um, design so I just um, switched it to blade design on a wind turbine. You built on it didn't yes. you? Are any of you interested in building on your project for another year? Yes. My project was actually a continuation of last year. And I, th I saw through the years that young people who built on projects really were able to take it deeper if they were interested in it. You don't want to do something more than one year you're not interested in. Now tell me, anybody else have uh, their project have some struggles? Maybe it wasn't a surprise, but it was um, was just more complicated or gave you problems. Anybody? Well, mine was kind of like that. I had some issues with the design in the beginning of the robot to get it to run. And then I found a design online that allowed me to switch out the number of wheels so that I wouldn't have to take one apart and then rebuild the other one over and over if I realized I need to go back to the first one. Did you find anybody find that your experiments worked right the first time? Anybody's? Well, I, mine kind of did, because like it did prove my hypothesis right that first time, and the second and the third, because I was basically because mine was doing with chlorine and the seeds, and the germination of the thing, of the plants. My bad. And um, they, they, my hypothesis was that. Um, when I added a 10% chlorine solution to the water and water the plant, there the seeds, my bad, um, that it would inhibit 50% or more of the seeds or prevent them from germinating. And that, and, the, and when I experimented, that did become the case. So, yeah. Well, you were very fortunate, weren't you? Because w would you say that you and most of your friends, it took several. Uh, different tries to get things to work and that is the real world one of the reasons the great gifts of doing projects like this um, tell me did what percentage in, in one or two of you can answer this what percentage of this project was done at school and what percentage did you have to do in your own time own time like 100 percent okay I did about 100 percent at my house too most of you do that, most of it at home. The whole problem. Um, were there times you wanted to chunk it? Yes. yes. Anybody? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're, you're blessed, Chase, that yours was not in this, uh, this, this project where you didn't at times want to chunk it. Um, well, is there a possibility that if we go to your boards, you could tell us a little bit more in depth about your projects? Okay. This is Chase LeMaster, and his project is uh, looks pretty complicated to me, Chase. Maybe you better tell us about it. Yes. Well, my project was called The Next Step in Transportation, and this is the next building system that I used to test my hypothesis. Um, I tested the difference between a vehicle with three wheels and a vehicle with four wheels and with different variables to see how well they performed. I had different tracks, textures, and weight. Um, and I have the vehicle right now if you, I would like to show. It runs rather slow on the carpet. but. Now is it just going where it wants to go, Chase? 
It has a program that was downloaded from a computer system through USB that I have, and my there's software capability in this that's just held in like. In I knew it library. wasn't just a plain old robot. <laughs> yes. So Chase, what do you think? Uh, did did you prove your hypothesis? Yes, it was actually incorrect. Your your hypothesis was incorrect. Yes. Okay. And you would like to take this further, and you took it further than you did in prior years, is that right? Yes, I did use the same system, but not the same project. Okay. And what would you like to do now? How would you like to go to the next level? Well, I think I would, um, during state science competition with some of my judges, I realized some of the possible mistakes that I, could, that I had made, like if I were to say, uh, depending on this vehicle's weight, I would have added a different amount of weight to represent a human because the weight was half of this vehicle and a grown adult doesn't weigh half of a car, so I can see how that may have affected the results. So you found a way that you could make it better? Yes. Way to go. Definitely. Well, anything else you would like us to know about your project? Well, there's nothing in specific, but like, um, really, uh, I was pretty surprised by the fact um, that on track one there's lots of tight turns and U-turns and stuff, so I would assume that the three-wheel vehicle's pivot wheel would do better, and track two was long distances and shallow turns, but I was actually, it was actually backwards. The four-wheel vehicle did better on track one. Did it bother the, you, you that you were wrong at first? Well, I was actually really surprised, <laughs> but I was kind of glad, like, I've always thought that if you had an incorrect hypothesis, you'd be able to come up with a better conclusion or have mm -hmm. more to talk about or explain. So you're learning to be a better scientist. Definitely. And you've told me you also like math. Yes, ma'am. Keep it up, buddy. Good job. Thank you. <laughs> Joey Urian is at Glenn, seventh grade, and his project is about plants, but, uh, but about experimenting with how they grow? How they grow when they're watered with salt water. Now, why would you think a plant would grow in salt water, Joey? Well, it's actually test their resistance against salt water. Oh, okay. And because, um, as you know, that um, problem that the world faces today is the lack of fresh water in our community. So if farmers could grow plants with more salt water than fresh water, then it would be more efficient to save water. Before you did this project on hydroponics, had you ever seen plants grown in hydroponic condition? Very few, but some yes. My grandpa did do grow some plants in his greenhouse hydroponically, but those are the only ones I saw. Did he make a base uh, that he filled with gravel and pumped the fluids through it? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's what my father did. Okay, talk to us about your what you thought was going to happen here. Well, I grew my plants in vermiculite. I had one set in vermiculite and one in soil. And vermiculite is just a type of mineral. It's this mica that has been heated at very high temperatures. But it also contains no nutrients like soil does, so you have to add artificial nutrients for the plants to grow. So I thought that if you grew the plants with vermiculite instead of soil, that they would be able to withstand a little bit more than the salt, more salt resistance than the regular plants grown in soil. And last year, I did similar to this project, where I grew just soil plants in so, um, different percentages of salt water in their water, see how much resistance it would have to it. And this year I added a set with vermiculite. And my, hypo my hypothesis was correct that because the hydroponic plants I grew in vermiculite could actually withstand five to 10% the amount of salt and seawater in their water, which I watered them with, more so than soil plants. So now, Tell the truth. Do you grow any plants at, at your house? Me, very few. I might have once or twice. My grandpa does all the time. He's the one who gave me the I idea I think for this you project. need to grow some tomatoes. <laughs> or some flowers. 
do they do grow things like flowers and hydroponics? My father grew vegetables. You can grow almost anything in hydroponics, but with hydroponic plants, they do not yield as much potential. Okay. Like, they wouldn't be as much as if you grew them in soil. And I don't know if the soil affects the taste of the plants or... Okay, I can answer both of those. My dad's plants didn't grow as tall, but they still produced. Mm -hmm. But we could not taste it. They were wonderfully, wonder, they tasted wonderful. So, um, but I don't know what other people's experience. See, in my project, with the soil plants, even with 5% of the amount of salt in seawater, not even a gram of salt in their water, it still killed the plants by the end yeah. of the experiment. Yeah. But with my hydroponics, the 10% and the 5% stayed alive. Well, I'll be. Okay, so how would you like to take it further? Maybe a different variety of plants, because in this, I just use radish seeds. Okay. That's the only plant I use, so maybe different types like flowers, vegetables, fruits, grass. Tomatoes. <laughs> <laughs> well, you think you might like to take this and build on it for another year or a guard to another topic? I think I'm probably going to move to another topic because last year, like I said, I did okay. similar to this experiment. Okay. So this is kind of already built off of another one. Okay. Way to go, young man. Thank you. It's a pleasure learning more about this. My dad would be proud of you. Thank you. <laughs> Donnie Peterson, 8th grade at Glenn, did a project on soybeans, which is really, really cool. So talk to us about your project. Well, my project was testing the effects of uh, chlorine concentration on the germination of soybeans. And basically I was testing, like, uh, I would have different percentages of chlorine inside the water that I would water the plants with. And I was going to see what were going to be the effects of it. Like, would it grow faster or, I mean, germinate faster or slower or stuff like that. And you said that you're, you're hypo you proved your hypothesis. Yes, ma'am. So you're, do you think that that made your project stronger? To tell you the truth, I'm not really sure about that, but... I'm not really sure. Did any judge? Did you learn something from your judges at the different competitions about? Did they make suggestions to you about your project? That I should probably like maybe if, like I was telling them that if maybe if I would probably continue it and probably do that like because I was just testing the germination. Maybe I can test the plant growth because like when I was doing my experiment, like I had a surprise that like when I had 1.5 percent mixture with the chlorine and the water. Uh, when I when I watered the plants and stuff for like um, around five days, six days, and the the seed germinated twice as fast as the control group, which was just received water and no chlorine, but all the others um, they germinated and they germinated slower than the control, and so when, once that happened, I was maybe gonna think of like maybe trying to test the uh, the growth of the plant because I just tested the germination, so maybe I could see. Oh, will it still affect the, the growth of the plant? Like, okay. will it increase its growth or decrease it? Or Who's your science teacher? Uh, Miss Haskins. Okay. Yes, so you like science, yes, and that's a good thing. Yes, ma'am. Except you would prefer not to have tests. That's yes, what you tell me. Okay. Yes, you would like, you like doing projects? Uh, yes, ma'am. Okay. Way to go, young man. Thank you. Excellent job. Thank you. Connie Hernandez, who is an eighth grader at Lincoln, mm -hmm. And your project is about DNA, which yes. is a very interesting topic to a lot of people. Yes, ma'am. So tell me about your project. Well, my project is extracting DNA from a vegetable. And the vegetable I chose in this, in this experiment was the white onion. And it's actually pretty interesting because DNA, even though it's really small, it actually is a very important thing. So being able to be in cellular biology is actually a really good category and um, my project is basically just you know trying to understand DNA so um, 
after doing a couple of hours of research, there was a lot of hours of research, I actually discovered that um, DNA is an organic substance that encodes and, and carries genetic information. And it's also the fundamental element of heredity. And so after figuring out what DNA was, it's pretty weird to do experiment and you're clueless about something. So I actually had to do lots and lots of research about what DNA was and what certain chemicals that I can mix together to help react with them to extract them from the onion. So um, after I actually did that, I had to create a substance out of just like dishwashing soap and water and adding several pints of salt to it to help actually create a new chemical, sort of. And then um, I did some blending and some heating and I actually used ethanol in my experiment to help bleach the DNA strands. And after doing all this, the actually I got to see DNA strands actually like form out of the onion. So that was worth it all, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Wow, young lady, you've learned a lot. Would you say you spent more time do, really working with that onion or more time in research? I would say doing the research. Okay, but when you started your actual project then you had a lot of information to mm -hmm. build upon, didn't yes, you? Now did you prove or disprove your hypothesis? I proved my hypothesis. Way to go! <laughs> Way to go, way to go. Now, did you? is this the first year for you to do a project on this topic? Yes, ma'am. Now, you don't know for sure whether you'll get to do a project next year, but you told me that you're going to get to help one of your younger sisters. Yes, ma'am. Do you think you'll do something on DNA? Um, next year, I probably will do something on DNA. Okay. But my sister, she's probably interested in, like, mechanical, so she'll probably do something like that. Okay. So if she's going to get your help, you're willing for her to pick her topic. Yes, ma'am. Way to go. Way to be a good big sister. <laughs> did you, what did you learn from the judges at your competitions? I learned that the higher level you got to, the more competitions I went to, such as state, the judges were more interested, and they actually asked harder questions mm -hmm. for you to actually ponder more and they actually went deeper into the experiment. You actually had to do a little bit more research to make sure next time you got judged that you wouldn't be, you know, clueless on what you were doing. <laughs> That's good to That's not fine. be clueless. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, uh, I'm impressed with the amount of research you put into this project, young lady. Like you high school is going to get a good student. Way to go. Thank you. Danielle Ratcliffe, seventh grader at Glenn, and you have done something that's very appropriate to West Texas and what's going on in our state right now. Did that have something to do with your choice of uh, a topic? Somewhat. I've, I am interested in the environment and I also um, built on last year's project. So your second year to do it, did, did it help you that this was your second year to do a sim to build on a project? Yes, ma'am, because um, I knew more about what I was doing, so I wasn't That's completely good. clueless. That's good. Completely clueless about what I was doing. And your, how did you take it deeper this year? I just changed it from airplane wing design to blade design on a wind turbine. Okay. Have you been out to see those that are in our yes, area? And you, did you get to talk to anybody that was involved in the wind farms? Uh, no, ma'am. I, I have only heard one person. I think it's very interesting to hear about those that are actually involved in it now. Tell me what you learned. Uh, I learned that blade design actually does affect the performance of the wind turbines. And as you can see here, um, this blade right here produced the most electricity, followed by this blade. And what is the difference in this blade and those blades? This blade right here has a flat bottom, which is more like you would see on airplanes. This blade I actually just invented, and it has a curved okay. concave inside. And this one is fully symmetrical. And why did you think those designs might be good? Um, they're actually the same wing designs that I used last year, except they're just blades now. Okay. Oh my. Okay. And why do you think this one was the superior one? It has more aerodynamic qualities than these two. Okay. So as the air pushes up on this part, 
it will also pull up. Okay. So it will move faster around. And most airplanes that have propellers now have this design, is that yes. right now? Okay. So did you prove or disprove your hypothesis? Well, I had kind of two hypotheses. And I thought that this blade would actually produce the most, and my hypothesis as to the blades was correct. But I also had a hypothesis as to the angle of the blades. You see these? Those are the angles. Okay. But my hypothesis as to the angles was wrong. I thought it would increase as the angle increased, but it just felt, it just dropped off. Did you, do you know why? Because uh, uh, there was um, two ways you could put the blades. Like, this could be your zero degrees, or okay. this could be your zero degrees. Okay. It just depends on which way you put it. Okay. Okay. So, what do you plan to do from here with your project? I could do one of two things. I could make a blade that had no aerodynam aerodynamic qualities at all and see if the aerodynamic qualities of the blades actually helped, helps the blades produce more electricity, or make a blade that kind of twists off at the end to possibly reduce drag. So do you think today that you might stick with this topic for next year or go with something new? I think I might stick with this topic. It's very interesting. Way to go. The judges like that, don't they? <laughs> they like you to go deep and rigorous. Way to go, young lady. Thank you. Very nice work. Thank you. Somebody's going to have you working for them with these. Thank you so much. Thank you. Angelica Ibarra, 8th grade Glenn, going to be at Central Freshman next year. Yes. And there's some great science teachers there as well, just like at Glenn. Now, you had an, uh, a, di a very different from the other projects. And you, how in the world did you decide to do this uh, particular project? Well, I always see the commercials on Gatorade, and I always see all the athletes playing um, basketball, or, and I think, well, maybe that's the most electrolytes that you can get out of that Gatorade, because obviously everybody else uses it. So I wanted to find a more natural way, because I know that Gatorade's not all natural, and I wanted to find a more natural way to get electrolytes other than just Gatorade. And did you do, what kind of research did you do before you started on this project? Uh, I looked up um, what was an electrolyte and what were the components of an electrolyte. And the components are sodium, magnesium, and potassium, which um, all of these components were really high, and the coconut water, which I also found out while I was researching, and that's why I wanted to use it also. Well, and coconut is a flavoring that's fairly accessible, not too terribly expensive, so that was a good choice. And then, did you prove your hypothesis, or did you uh, disprove it? I disproved it, actually, because I thought, or actually I proved it, I'm sorry. That's okay. Um, I thought that the coconut water would have more, because I had researched it, and I saw seen um, all the potassium, magnesium, and sodium it had. And the potassium was like, um, sorry, it like overtrumped the Gatorade by a lot whenever I researched it. So where do you hope to go from here? Are you interested in learning more about this or are you interested in finding another topic to research? Um, I think I'll probably stay with the same category, at least I know that, and because I like medical and health sciences and stuff, and that's what I want to do whenever I grow up, so that's, I'll definitely stay with something similar to this. Did a judge give you a comment that helped you in your thinking uh, about a way that your project might be better? Yes, they actually asked me if I use Pedialyte which is also high in electrolytes for um, whenever your little kids are sick and they can't eat much. And that's what they drink because it's, um, it's not too harsh on your di digestive system. And actually, I might try that next year. Ooh, good suggestion, by the way. Well, young lady, you're, I hope you stick with your interest in science 
because we need many more young ladies to go into that field. It's a national effort, and you're on your way. Thank way you. to go.